Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Second Chance. This is designed by Uwe Rosenberg and it is published by Stronghold Games. Bethany, do you believe in Second Chances? I Yes, sure. Yeah, and Third and Fourth Chances, yeah. Well, Second Chance, it's right here. It's real! You I, can't say it doesn't exist! Second Chance, it's here, we see it! I believe in Second Chances. All right, you guys, I've got a riddle for you. This is a tile laying game. Okay. However, mm -hmm. there's no tiles. How is that possible? Let me show you how it plays. All right, here is our setup for Second Chance. Every player is going to get one of these blank player cards, as well as a piece of paper and a pencil. You're gonna have to supply that yourself. There is a big deck of cards that we're gonna be drawing from. We also have some reference cards. These are all different shapes that you might find in the game. So you can kind of hold out for a certain, <laughs> a certain one. All right, but at the beginning of the game, what's gonna happen is every player is gonna get dealt one of these. It's just a randomly shaped polyamino piece that you're gonna start the game with. So we all have a varying piece that we're gonna begin the game with, so we all kind of have a different start. There's a dot in the middle of the board, and you have to kind of use that to start off with, but you can do it any way you want. They suggest drawing the outline of the tile first and then shading it in. All right, and now for the rest of the game, we're gonna be dealing with this deck here. So every round, what's gonna happen is we're gonna flip over two and every player gets to decide to choose one of those two things and draw on their board. It might look something like that. All right, so everyone's board is going to kind of fill up a little bit differently because they all had a different starting tile, as well as throughout the game, we might have taken, you know, chosen different things out there. Eventually, there's going to come a point where uh, you cannot fill in one of the options that you have. So let's say you've got two choices out there like always. Well, that's a bad example because that's a really easy one to fill in. We get two tiles out there and they just do not fit anywhere on your board no matter how hard you try. What you do is you get a second chance. So you, by yourself, you get to flip over a new card. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't look like that, because that would be a hard last one to fill in. But if you are able to fill it in, you fill it in on your board just like normal, and you're back in the game just like normal. However, if you are unable to fill this in, what you're going to do is you're going to write a number one in one of the open squares of your board if you're the first person out. And then uh, you are out of the round, everyone else is going to finish. Now if the next person around, someone else also needs to go out. You know, they revealed a couple, they couldn't put them in, man, once again. <laughs> What a great tile to get late in the game. Uh, but you know, perhaps they might come to a situation where they can't also finish it and their second chance also fails. They're gonna write a number two on theirs. That is a couple of things for you. Those numbers fill in a square, which is great, uh, but also they're a tiebreaker. At the end of the game, if the game ends with a tie, whoever has the lower number, the number one obviously, is gonna be declared the winner. The game can end a number of ways. Either one player completely fills up their entire board. Uh, if that's the case, they're the winner. Or uh, the game can end if this entire deck runs out. You need to draw from it and there's not enough cards out there uh, to supply this the board. If that's the case, the game ends then. You see who has the fewest squares on their board left open. And again, if there's a tie, whoever has the number one on their board is declared the winner. The third way that the game can end is if all players drop out. Uh, there's no more people who are left in the game who can fill in any tiles after their second chances have failed. And at that point, you would count the squares that are empty. Whoever has the fewest open squares is declared the winner, again with the tiebreaker being whoever has that number one on their board. One of the really simple little clever things about this game is the fact that every single player starts with their own starting tile that they have to draw on their board. So none of our sheets look the same from the get-go, meaning you can't just copy somebody the whole time, right? And then come up exactly with what they come up with because you have a different shape going on the board. They even have it like, you have to do this in this area to kind of mess you up from the beginning, but it makes the variety. I love how this game, as you fill up your board, it gets tighter and tighter. Less and less shapes are able to make it onto your board. And there comes a point where neither one of the options are able to fit in your board, and you get that second chance, which is the name of the game. I love that opportunity you have to get that second chance. And that feeling you get when you're able to actually get one, and it's able to fit on the board, and you're back in the game, yeah. you're like, oh, yes! You know, it just <laughs> feels so good when that second chance actually works out. So uh, that is a really fun point in the game for me. 
I think it is really neat that in this game, those could the tiles could have really been anything, right? But there are these uh, pretty little flowery artwork. And I like that that was a direction that they chose to take this with because it didn't have to. And so I like that it added that. I would like to add the caveat that when you play this with people, I don't consider myself somebody who has AP, but the first time I played this, cause my, I do not have that, that spatial brain. So it took me a little bit longer. So when you teach this to people, just give them a little bit of time because the second time I was able to play this and I was given that time, I thoroughly enjoyed the game so much more. And by that time, it's like an extra 15, 20 seconds is all that person needs to be able to look at the shape and see how it could fit on their board. So I would just give that caveat, give people like me who are not spatially aware a little bit more time to play this game but besides that it, it was really fun especially being able to play it with people who gave me the chance to play it instead of rushing me along so this was a fun little game yeah this is extremely quick every turn is like you said 20 seconds 30 seconds or whatever because we're all playing simultaneously yeah. uh it's just so fast it's really fun i love the tiling games you know this is a uh uwe rosenberg game Tile, the polyomino tile style games with him are are usually top notch, and this is you know the most boiled down distilled one of them that I've played. Yeah. And I think it's you know the fact that we were drawing them on there is just very unique and novel. I had a great time with this one. This is a game that we can play with anybody because it's just so accessible. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. And I want to know: Do you have a game that people just like force you to play faster than you want to play? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, you can find us on Facebook, we're Ryan Bethany Board Game Reviews. On Twitter, we're Ryan Bethany One. And on Instagram, we are Ryan and Bethany. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.